Dun, 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 copyrights, there's no other way that I can really intro. But I feel like it's much more fitting for arguably one of the most talked about releases from McFarlane, both for good in the sense that they're looking to actually bring about the original 89 version of the Keaton Batman to figure McFarlane toy figure form, as well as a much more accurate Batmobile packed in a gold label two pack that at the expense, and this is the bad stuff, at the expense of it being an exclusive for Amazon. Does it live up to the hype and to the frustrations of being able to pre-order it way back when and being able to find it out in the wild now? Let's take a look. Let's talk about the man himself first because he's probably the most manageable to do so here in the light box. It's going to be the Keaton Batman because this is one of the first things that a lot of collectors minds went to when the Flash version was unveiled and released prior to the release of that movie because even though we were all hyped to see, at least for the most part, hyped to see Keaton come back, he was coming with a much more modernized suit that had kind of bits of column A, bits of column B, a modern take on the original Bat suit, while at the same time being able to retain an awful lot of the sensibilities that made that suit Keaton's suit. It didn't look like Bale's, it didn't look like Clooney's or Kilmer's, it looked like his. But a lot of people then thought, why not actually go back to the drawing board, use the skeleton, if you will, of that figure, and give us a proper 89 gold label Keaton, or at least at the time, we didn't know it was going to be a gold label exclusive. So it looks like it's finally here, and frankly, I like this guy better. I can't believe it. I honestly cannot believe that the original modern version, or the multiverse version of the Keaton Batman from The Flash, might just be dethroned from his spot in one of my favorites of 2023. I understand that that's frankly a very tall order, and that's not to say it's a perfect one, but there's just so many details about this 89 take that work in McFarlane toy form. And you know I'm being for real because I've mentioned this already in prior videos, I'm not the biggest Keaton fan. You know, when he was announced to be coming for The Flash, yeah, I was pretty excited. I like the actor. I know I love an awful lot of his body of work, especially for his deadpan style. Loved him in Birdman, Beetlejuice, etc. But he was still one of the more bright spots of The Flash. And so owning that figure and respecting that take, I was, I was down for it. But when it comes to the original 89, there's something about the rustic design of the suit that I just think it's okay. I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's bad. It's definitely a very fine prototype, if you will, for that very first theatrical release, theatrical portrayal of the Cape Crusader. But I just never liked how, you know, very rubbery and latex and very makeshift it looked like, especially for the style of budgets that they had, that they had to fork over to a relative newcomer like Tim Burton at the time, especially with Michael Keaton with the flag that he was getting. So to see it come forth here in McFarlane toy form, it's an ironic twist of fate to say that that rubberized, very latexy feel really works well in the 7 inch format because there's so many little details about the suit that actually feel good and fear. This is one of those cases where I'm just going to have to separate my personal notions, my personal feelings about the suit itself and just look at the figure objectively and say this is one badass portrayal because here, yeah, we have an awful lot of those nostalgic details, most notably the bat symbol here on the center with the little wing tips towards the bottom that some people like. So it's kind of 50-50 as far as who you ask. Some people like those little wing tips at the bottom, some others. I like the actual design and concept of the symbol. I just personally don't like the gold reflective coat of paint they used for the yellow. And my nitpick on that stands at about a 50-50 fence because on the one hand, I don't like that. I wish it was a bit more faithful to the original version that was just an all bright yellow but it looks like they're fixing that for the six pack which is cool it looks like there's going to be a version out there that is going to have the much more accurate bat symbol but it also kind of makes me wonder why exactly they didn't just put it here. You can maybe toss up the argument that this is meant to be a gold label variant since the official release of this two-pack with the Batmobile itself is categorized as a gold label. So maybe that could be the reasoning why, but I still think that they still had enough time to kind of go back to the drawing board and give us the proper yellow. But I digress. That yellow, in my opinion, flows a little better towards the belt right here that's much more screen accurate. You have the circular little details there on the middle. And and it's mostly plain for the most part because that's exactly how it was back in 89. But at least the reflective coating, I'm able to swallow it. <laughs> yeah, 
phrasing there, but I'm able to take it in just a little better than that of the symbol. Once we get past those specific color apps, we then look at the actual texturing and detail of the suit. And even though, like I said, on a subjective level, when it comes to comparing the bat suits, this is not necessarily one of my favorites, the way that we're able to really bring it home here in McFarlane DC Multiverse form is top notch. The abs, the way that it's all got that very matted, rubberized look. In other figures, you could almost chalk it up to being kind of like a manufacturing error when you have that coat of the rubberized feel to the surface where you're like, ah, I don't, I wish they would have added some paint apps to kind of do away with that. And you could almost call it a manufacturing error, but I'll be damned if it actually works here on the suit itself. It actually fits because that's literally how the suit looked like in the movie. If you go back and watch that movie, you have an awful lot of that latexy, very, I don't know, very tar looking surface to the suit that looked incredibly uncomfortable and I believe Keaton has often testified that it was a, a pain to be in that suit let alone actually being able to move around and go to the bathroom it also looks very terrible for our figure friend here to be in the suit because it all looks very compartmentalized but in an accurate way especially even the diaper piece right here which is very flush to the body it looks like the, the figure form can barely go to the bathroom in and of itself. And then once you get to the gauntlets, boots, and the other parts of the suit, they even added little wrinkles to the detail to make sure it look like it's actually part of a suit that was kind of put together and strung together to kind of give it that clothy kind of illusion as you navigate the inside parts of the gauntlets themselves. Mine came a little bit on the warped with a few bits of spikes right here, but the more I look at the actual gauntlet itself, the way you then get the little kind of texturized feel to the gloves, the lining on the knuckles, as well as the top part of the hand. I don't know what it is, but there's just something about it that overall just looks awesome. Especially when I actually got a little giddy to look at the boots and the shin covers as well, because even though you have much more screen accurate covers here on the front of the boots, you then get to the shoes themselves, where not only you get this extra rubberized piece covering the front part to kind of blend in the entirety of the boot to make it all one piece, even though that's physically impossible to incorporate the joint in there, but then you look at the shoe itself and you notice that it's a little on the thicker side, it's much thicker than the original modernized version from the Flash, but the reason why that actually ended up making me smile is because that actually factored in to a detail from the movie itself, from behind the scenes, if you will. Because if you know your Batman 89 trivia, you know that they actually added an extra, I want to say, inch or two to the soles of Michael Keaton's feet to kind of make him a little taller because despite putting in a pretty decent performance as the Dark Knight, Keaton is not exactly the actual height he's supposed to be so in order to make him a much more intimidating force or at least a little bit better looking on screen especially with the likes of Jack Nicholson's Joker or even more important at the time in the 80s his love interest Kim Basinger they added that extra little inch right there to at least level him out so it's cool that they even brought that detail to McFarlane toy format and I love it. What many people may not love, however, are two things. One is the cape. It's the exact same style of cape as the original Flash version, so you're not really going to find any form of discrepancies there. If you loved it, or at the very least liked it, like myself, then you're going to like it here as well. It's pretty much the exact same material and cutout, but if you were not a fan of these, then they make a return here, and unless you find yourself a customizer that's able to swap it out for like a wired one or a better material one, you're going to have to do that. Which is cool and all, but I even I have to admit that versus the Flash version, I kind of wish that this would have draped just a little nicer since in the 89 movie, he was do doing an awful lot of you know, brooding and draping the cape, especially to intimidate the bad guys at the roof at the beginning of the movie. So it would have been nice if it could drape a little better, but sadly, much like that first version, it's doing like this weird coiling thing around the shoulders and not a, the, the biggest fan of that. So I, that's something that I wish that they could have fixed a little bit in tailoring, but at least you could still use a little bit of these spikes right here on the side to kind of drape it over the side towards the back and then make it look a little bit more flush to the shoulders. I feel like what's much more privy to this version would have to be the neck because that's one of the major inaccuracies that just kind of comes with the territory at the expense of the joint, the neck joint that actually has to be there. Because one of the distinguishing factors of Keaton's suit in that 89 film would be this cowl, this entirety piece of the cowl with the spikes here on the sides that then connect to the bat symbol. And it's pretty faithful for the most part there but once you get to the neck joint that's where they had to slim things out to make sure that that actually is a possible thing to include a head joint and <laughs> which is ironic because one of the big 
things that an awful lot of people like to make fun of in that movie is the fact that he can't turn his head his head he always has to turn his entirety of the top part of his body in order to be able to turn to the right turn to the left like this he literally has to go like this the way I'm moving the figure right here, that's how Keaton had to navigate in that movie. He often talks about it in stories. And so the fact that they had to actually compromise by thinning out the neck, that may bother some people that were going for the screen accuracy, but at least you're getting a neck joint to be able to be able to move the head sculpt itself, which even I would argue is a much better head sculpt to that of the Flash version because even though it could look a little bulbous at times, especially with the way that the ears are kind of spread out a little more than I would like it it's down to that mouth plate that I think does look a little bit more accurate than that of the flash version the flash version there's something about it that yeah there's some characteristics to it from certain angles that it looks like Keaton but this is the one where no matter what angle I look at I see a little bit of the lips the lips are a little bit more fuller the skin tone is a bit more accurate there's just so many things that are working in favor of this. It's just that what's kind of throwing it off is the thinness of the neck because you're just so used to having this entirety of the cowl being all one piece that once you get to the thinning of the neck, the head does look a little bit bulbous by comparison. So that's just the one thing you have to take into consideration when actually looking at this part of the body. But once you actually look at the sculpting and the detail behind the eyes, the way that they were able to sink them in inside of the cowl, that's pretty much the 89 version through and through. And to get those different angles of the head, you must be able to turn the head, which again, goes against type for Keaton's Batman back in that movie, but at least here in McFarlane form, it works very favorably. You're able to rotate the head fully, 360 degrees as well as being able to really awesomely awesomely is that even a word it's not but I'll use it to describe just how well it's able to tilt up and down very fluidly while at the same time not too loose to where it just feels like it's going to be drooping all over the place and very solid tilting from left to right so you can get an awful lot of that going on right there screen accuracy be damned I love it that it's able to do that period it just gets into it just feeds an awful lot into the cool poses that you're able to put them in whether it be to looking up at the bat signal or looking down like it's brooding like I mentioned before then you get to the shoulders that do have this awesome ball joint right here that allows it to rotate fully 360 and with the cloth cape being well cloth you're able to fully rotate it without no problem extension towards the sides is very good as well as the slight butterfly movement you get allowed there you are able to kind of shrug and swivel the arms in place ever so slightly so they are a little sticky but they can be done and then the bicep swivels, a little tight, but you can rotate them fully 360, as well as the two joints at the elbows that are fully able to bend. And the wrist joints, even though they are ball pegs, they're not the very flush ones like I usually like, they are able to still rotate, as well as being able to press inwards and outwards. Then we get to my favorite joint, which would have to be the torso minus one little negative. You get two joints, the mid torso and the waist. The mid torso is able to turn the full 360 degrees despite the separation at the abs that of course are going to ruin a little bit of that immersion because of the way that it's able to just flush and completely blend in but beyond the rotation you're able to really crunch towards the inside and towards the back now this is the one negative that i was going to mention is that even though you get an awful lot of good extension towards the back it does cut off to the point where you start to show off a little bit of the joint inside you have this rather large gaping hole right here that looks like it's going to eat the joker alive right about in there kind of freaky but at least it does favor the movement overall and it also feels like it could kind of shift inwards and outwards you can see a little bit of the shifting happening right there and if you couldn't already guess you can definitely crunch from side to side on the obliques right about right there and the waist joint does allow the full rotation 360 degrees in place as well as further crunching towards the front and then extension towards the back not as much as the mid torso but still adding an added level of mobility to the overall you can see right there and it's fluid too it doesn't feel too stiff too tight but at the same time not too loose it's a perfect balance it's one of the things that i really hope that mcfarlane is able to take away from when developing this figure and incorporate it into more if this is still there for not just the this keaton but also kilmer clooney in that six pack we might just have a winner for the set of the year. We'll see. 
But then we move down to the diaper where we have the top two leg joints that sadly because of how flush and tight it is on the body it does kind of limit a little bit of the legs to be able to move towards the front. It's still pretty favorable. It's still pretty decent but it's a little tight when getting to that point let alone extending towards the back where you have a little bit of the butt sculpt of that crotch piece kind of getting in the way right about right there. Extension, however, towards the sides is not too bad. You can actually get almost at the full 180 right about right there. Two joints at the knees that are fully able to bend all the way up and are actually ratcheted on mine. I think they're ratcheted for the majority of the units out there, so that's good to see right there. And even though we do have this piece of the rubber plastic here on the top of the boot to kind of blend it in and make it all one or at least make the illusion that it's all one piece like it was in the movie you still have that flush boot cut design for the joint that I love the natural one that blends in with the rest of the foot and the ankle and the leg it's still here underneath that piece and because of this piece it's able to kind of tighten a, fir a firmer grip on the overall joint so not only can you rotate the ankle at a full 360, but it's actually it actually ends up being ratcheted. It's technically not ratcheted. The joint itself is not ratcheted if it's the same one that they've been using. But because of this rubber piece gripping onto it, it pretty much causes it to be ratcheted in a good way. Same thing goes for bending it towards the bottom like so and extending it towards the top like that. So it's very, very firm to where I honestly don't feel like the base is going to be required for the use of this guy in terms of poses. And the toesies are still there. I kind of wish that they would be able to bend a little bit on the higher side, right about right there. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like they bend too much like prior McFarlane, let alone the original Flash version, but they are still found there. To me, I still love the fact that they were able to kind of bring new technologies to the ankles so that when it comes to possibility with this guy it's not going to be a problem and since i just mentioned that first flash version i guess there's really no choice before moving on than to compare the two and actually bring both on screen at the same time and you can see that the difference is rather drastic even though they're sporting more or less the same exact cape you can definitely tell it's a brand new mold it's not a repaint marvel legends it's not <laughs> I'm gonna I'm really gonna hold on to that one but they may have used some parts here and there the skeleton overall to just kind of build off of that blueprint and really deliver on a proper 89 suit while at the same time not really kind of at least if they're doing something where they're reutilizing parts they're doing an exceptional job of hiding it because frankly I'm looking at the head sculpt I'm looking at the chest and I just barely see any kind of real reutilization of parts. I see that an awful lot of the suit has been overhauled. Maybe the bat symbol. Again, I would probably argue that the cloth cape is the only part that was reused. And maybe a little bit of the gauntlet architecture. But once you get to the look of the gauntlets and the boots themselves, specifically getting away from that ugly green tinge that he had in the movie, even though... I've seen the movie myself, and unless I missed it, I never really found out exactly why he has the little green details on the gauntlets and the boots. I, I'm sorry, I might have to rewatch the movie again, but I frankly just do not remember that being the case at any point in the movie. So to finally get it right with the 89 version, minus my qualms with the gold yellow behind the bat symbol and on the belt, man, I would argue that despite not being my, the biggest fan of Keaton's Batman, I prefer this guy over this guy now. I never thought that I would say that, but the ears, the head sculpt, the overall proportioning of the body, and making sure that you can actually nail the texturized, very rubberized, stretchy look of the surface detail of the suit and making it work in your favor. Man, McFarlane, you guys kind of outdid yourselves. Don't know about it being labeled as either an Amazon exclusive or part of a six pack that you have to put down $120 for but man oh man I would say that regardless of how you manage to come across it whether it be second hand you're going to be in good hands with the 89 Keaton Batman right here and as such I'm still going to refrain from giving him the perfect score because there's still a couple of things here and there that might be fixed when he comes in that six pack but as it stands he is definitively a 9 out of 10 even though I still prefer him over this one. They're on equal footing. They're both 9 out of 10s. But if I had to pick one, frankly, I will go for the 89 version. I can't believe I'm saying that. Now that we've gotten the man himself out of the way, it's time to get in the car. 
First of all, if I can just get a little Karen here on McFarlane. Guys, I understand, you know, you probably had to put these out real quickly, but not a fan of the way that the figure himself was packaged in the box. Sandwiched in the middle of the cardboard insert right there like a swap meet figure. I mean, look at this. He's in a plastic baggie. I was kind of expecting him to have his own little box. Even if it's not the big box you'd expect to see in the stores. No, it's just something a little bit more compact. And I was kind of half expecting for the box to be a little bigger once I got through the three shippers it came in like a Russian doll. So to see it just kind of thrown in there like this... Would have expected a little better. And as we strap ourselves in to Batman's trusty ride, we naturally need to remove the light box because it not only doesn't fit one Batmobile in there, let alone two, as we now have to take a very close comparison look at the two Batmobiles, one from the original Flash movie release and then the 89 two-pack that is an Amazon exclusive. And as you can see, there are a couple of very distinguishing differences as far as the ones that immediately catch your eye, the ones that you're able to notice just right off the bat. No pun intended. That was actually not really my intention to really go for that phrase. But... As far as what you can really pick up on, you can see that the probably probably the biggest key difference is going to be the much more screen accurate. I don't even want to call it a matte finish. It's actually more so of a satin kind of texture that is frankly a bit more screen accurate to the 89 version of the Batmobile versus that of the Flash movie. Even though, if you go back and watch at least that specific scene when one of the Ezra's... <laughs> oh, okay. Very traumatizing. But one of the berries actually removes the tarp. You can actually see that it still retains a little bit. I mean, yeah, it's a bit more ref reflective because over the course of time, probably a little bit of that sheen kind of got washed away. But overall, it still retains a little bit of that satin matte finish. So to see it be incredibly reflective with the plastic here in McFarlane Toys form back during earlier in the summer when we got this release, which was still in very high demand, it was one of those cases where we just had to take what we got. All of those little holdups that we had are pretty much retrofitted and retconned for the 89 version. I think the biggest one that you can tell, like I said, is going to be that the canopy is now completely black and completely matching the style and the actual shade and hue of black. I guess you could almost attribute it to a form of jet black or charcoal black as far as this finish that now matches the rest of the body for the Batmobile itself. But then the actual texture that they were able to overlay the plastic yeah, they utilize the same body, the same sculpt, the same skeleton rather, or the same chassis. But in terms of the actual texture that you're dealing with here, it's much more robust. It's got, like I said, that matte, matted satin finish. But there is a little bit of a holdup that I personally have. Some people may be a little quick to overlook it, but I personally do not like this. I don't know what it was, but in the process of bringing it from that shiny look to now this much more satin matte version, whatever. Again, I'm not a expert artist, uh, you know, painter or a sculptor or an artist or a manufacturer. But when it comes to bringing it from that texture to this one, something happened with the molding of the plastic that this finish, despite being much more screen accurate, it kind of brings forth some little discrepancies in the plastic. There's something about the way that it's all gelled together that if you look throughout the body of the car, you can see these little bits of warping or the plastic kind of shifting onto itself right underneath. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but I'll cut to some close-ups to exactly indicate exactly what I'm talking about. You can see it even a little bit in the wings that you still need to assemble onto the car. But as you navigate towards the front, you'll see all these little areas where it looks like there's dents, but... They happened just right out of the box. I didn't bump the car. I didn't move it or toss it or, or, or drop it. It all came just right out of the bag, packaged inside, with these little mishaps that I just don't see being too prevalent in the shiny version from the Flash movie version. So even though it comes off as a bit more consistent to the way that it looked like in the 80, 89 movie, there's just something about that, the little minute little warp areas, especially here towards the front of the car where the headlights are, these little kind of divots that again are speaking to that style, to the look that it wasn't originally in the movie, that it just kind of distracts my eye a little bit. Once you're able to separate a little bit of that, 
You then get down to the other little details that I was trying my best to pick apart as far as the major differences. And one of them I kind of already touched on, which are going to be the little bat symbol accents here on the wheels, on all four wheels. Where you'll notice now that they're fully silver, just like they were in the movie, as opposed to the gold ones on the, the original tires for the Flash movie version. And the rims themselves are now completely silver and a little bit on the lighter side versus that of the old black on the Flash movie version. Aside from that, unless I'm wrong about something, I scoped and scanned these vehicles from front to back. I looked at the turbine, I looked at the headlights and the taillights, the exhaust, everything, and even the little you know spindle here towards the front as far as the coat of paint that they applied to it. And everything that I was able to really circumvent and actually analyze very judiciously, I didn't really pin out any other major differences so the three major takeaways to keep in mind as you kind of compare the two will be again like I said the major one is going to be this finish to make it much more screen accurate to the Tim Burton movie the silver accents on the rims and the bat symbols inside of those rims and the canopy now being consistent with the rest of the body which definitely pleases the OCD for many collectors that are huge fans of the 89 film but once you're able to kind of separate yourself from that to me my biggest holdup as of the recording of this video will have to be these little areas uh, unless i got a defective unit and maybe uh someone in the comment section can let me know if in their unit in their version they don't really have all these little areas of warp going on with the plastic because i don't know it's just really bugging me i'll probably have to go over to like twitter and reddit to see other people's photography and see exactly if maybe this is just a a defective unit that I got that maybe didn't get printed all that well and maybe others have a much more consistent level of, of actual molding of the plastic so it doesn't look like it's coming through the finish here as badly as it did with mine which would uh, make my case rather unfortunate but if there's at least one positive that I can lean to as far as the 89 version is going to be that when you pop open the canopy you'll notice that you actually have the Keaton figure sitting very flush and very comfortably and snug inside of the Batmobile much better than the original Flash version because one of my major holdups of that first Batmobile was going to be how for some strange reason that Keaton at least the modern version of the Keaton from Flash the Flash movie was not able to fit all the way across into the cockpit itself and as I kind of was scanning the dashboard for the new 89 version and again trying to pick apart little differences that again I did not really note unless I'm completely overlooking something the seat look it looks exactly the same the cutout the molding the sculpting of the entirety of the dashboard even the paint apps are about the same which are just this generic chrome around the little divots and dots so I kind of wish that they still would have added a little bit extra to that as well as all the other little chrome parts on the side of the vehicle. All that most of the time stays the same. But at least one thing that I was able to analyze was that because of how they were able to sculpt out the legs a little on the shorter side for the original 89 gold label, fitting those legs into the holes that are inside, again there goes the euphemisms, but fitting those legs inside of the cockpit into the two little slits that are molded inside versus that of the Flash movie was a lot easier. It took almost no time at all to get this guy in there and actually fit without having to bend any of the ears on the underside. Whereas this guy, I st I ended up futzing with this guy for about a good 10 or so minutes before I finally gave up and did the old school trick of kind of like bending him at an angle and then trying to fit and press the head from un from the ears into the inside little groove that he has at the very top of the cockpit to actually get the gro the ears to sit inside of that groove and making sure that the ears aren't being warped or bent in any sort of way versus this guy this guy the ears never really touched the top they were able to actually fit the legs comfortably unless I got in incredibly lucky on my first try the legs were able to flush completely inside of those two slits he was able to kind of slide down and fit very comfortably on amongst the cockpit so that was a breeze it's just a shame that that came at the expense of a very very traumatizing realization upon opening the canopy I realized something something that is now going to probably haunt me at least for the next foreseeable couple of days before I move on to the next video that I need to film which is going to be where in the goddamn hell is the trading card yeah 
the trading card was shown in the promo pics. And here I have the one for the original Flash movie Batmobile that was actually kept inside of the canopy. So it was a nice little surprise when you open up the canopy for the very first time and this was just there waiting for you. So for those that are avid collectors of the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse trading cards, I got some bad news for you. I don't know what happened, if maybe there was a problem in manufacturing, but this guy does not come with a card contrary to those pics that were shown on the Amazon listing. It actually shows a card that shows both Batman and the Batmobile together in that iconic pose and yet there's no card i looked inside the canopy i looked inside the box I, hell i looked inside the shipper and even the packaging material inside of the main box all that cardboard that was thrown in on both ends and in the middle where the keaton figure was packaged so rudely i looked all over the place and it's not in there and according to a specific reddit post it looks like i'm not the only one frankly that's the other major win I'll have to give over to the Flash movie Batmobile because at least we got this in that original. How dare they? The umbrage, the total chicanery. I think we need a boycott. McF I'm, I'm kidding, guys. I, I really don't care. <laughs> I mean, don't get it twisted. There's a part of me that kind of still wish that they would have upheld to their usual standards because you do still get the base, the black circular base for the Keaton figure when he was packaged inside of that, like I said, that swap me looking bag. So that was at least still there, but to kind of not do the card and actually throw it in there it's like okay it's a piece of cardboard you couldn't have printed that in it's it's really more so confusing and bewildering rather than rage inducing it doesn't really upset me it just kind of confuses me jokes about the card aside however this is one of those sets that i will kind of deem as unreviewable because it's sort of a given if you're already a fan of McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line and their versions of Batman because if you're after a Keaton Batman that's faithful to that 89 interpretation and he comes bundled with the Batmobile at a very very good price of $75 because that's the one thing that we need to take into high consideration withstanding the scalpers out there that just nabbed this thing when the limited pre-order release was actually live on the Amazon listing, the $75 price tag, you get the Batmobile, which was retailing for $60 when it was released separately wide across various retailers for the Flash movie run, but then you get the Keaton, Keaton Batman for an additional $15, a, a McFarlane figure that you usually get for $20, bucks. you are pretty much taking a $5 discount on the entirety of the set, and it's a gold label exclusive no less. That, to me, honestly, is a humongous win and a big W for the Chad that is Todd McFarlane. With that said, it comes at the tremendous caveat of it being an Amazon exclusive and even though I respect the amount of packaging that they were able to make sure that this thing was encased in to make sure it securely arrives to my doorstep and it's not tampered with and it feels pretty premium the actual limited quantities that they had on hand is no doubt frustrating for so many collectors so if you by some miraculous chance come across it again on Amazon's listings for that effective price of $75 I mean, come on, like I said, it's kind of unreviewable and kind of pointless for me to say that you need to jump at that chance. Whatever means you can come across to get this thing shipped to you as soon as you get some kind of notification by following somebody on Twitter or on Reddit saying that the listing is now live and they have restocked, jump at the chance. It's kind of a given. I'll put an affiliate link in the description if you guys can utilize it, but of course, it kind of goes without saying it's pretty much sold out for the foreseeable future. Unless McFarlane decides to give it a third run with a much better restocking capacity. But if you truly cannot wait for that, I would say within reason, if you can find it through other means, whether it be through a vendor like Frankensons or eBay or Macari, just be ready for that premium price and decide for yourself if you really consider this to be worth it and you're that big of a fan of the 89 movie because at this point it really falls down to preference as far as my preference despite not being the biggest 89 movie fan this is still taking the cake despite like I said the potential defectiveness of the molding of the plastic from a Batmobile I still no doubt respect the consistency of the canopy now being accurate to the black of the remainder of the Batmobile, the actual consistency of the silver accents on the wheels, but then throwing in an immaculate 
Ke Keaton Batman with that original suit that really works well with the style of plastic and molding and sculpting and cloth material for the cape that works in that 7 inch scale. This like I mentioned already is undoubtedly one of the highlights of their year as far as McFarlane toy releases and definitely a major one to consider whether it be for figure of the year from McFarlane or at least set of the year as far as gold label sets, 3 packs, 2 packs, whatever you want to call it. This is definitely one to be considered later on for one of those high accolades. I'm tempted to give the Batmobile an 8 out of 10 versus a 9 out of 10 like the original only because of the discrepancies of the molding of the plastic but I just can't shake the feeling that this is more so a de defect on my personal unit here which is a shame but at least taking the Keaton which is a 9 out of 10 into consideration averaging it out and then me ultimately saying F it let's just round the whole score this is a 9 out of 10 set and again do not hesitate if you find it at that static MSRP price. It's pretty much a steal. Again, I will throw in that affiliate link in the description for the Amazon listing. There's a 100%, like a 99% chance that it's still sold out at this point. But who knows? I still recommend that you guys check out. I've gotten lucky with some other things in the past that were sold out only for me to just randomly check on Amazon and poof, there it was. And I managed to nab myself something pretty rare and special and, and awesome. So it doesn't hurt to at least try from time to time. And that link will be in the description if you guys want to utilize it and check it out. It does help out the channel in the process. Full disclaimer out there. And while you're down there, if you guys enjoyed watching this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. Comment below if you guys have this set. Are you guys loving it? Don't like it? Prefer the original Flash version for both the figure and the vehicle? And how do you guys feel about the card being absent? Was that a major goof on McFarlane's part? Or do you frankly not even collect those things in the first place? Subscribe and turn on notifications for more Batman and Spider-Man stuff coming up here in the future. And as always, stay humble. I'll see you guys later. I'm sure we've all been in the theater catching the latest superhero flick, but a lot of those movies recently have been kind of long. And after a while, that bulky wallet starts to leave a crater on the dark side of the moon. Well, your cheeks have been saved by Exter. I've partnered with them to showcase some of the sleek, elegant wallets that are currently available anywhere right now. About half the size of your typical wallet while still having enough space for all of your cards, they keep them protected with durable materials such as vegan Italian leather or space grade aluminum, and also keeps them secure from skimmers. These are some trying times we're in and you can never be too careful. So Exter makes sure to line their wallets up with RFID protection. But best of all, you can do this. Pressing one button grants immediate access to all of your cards in an instant. So the next time you take out your card at the exact moment you missed out on that new exclusive figure pre-order, take comfort in knowing that the card is safe, secure, and comes out of an Exter wallet. And you can get yours too by using the link in the description. And while you're checking that out, get a whopping 25% off your order when you check out using that link or typing in my promo code DarkSpiderDavid. I want to thank Exter for sponsoring this video.